Boker Tove having a good hair day. Yeah, yeah, having a good hair day. Hey, listen, I had a, I have some thoughts I want to speak about. Try to keep it brief, but there's a lot to it. You know, when we think about the Bible and God's covenant and God's commands to us, one of the most common concepts often associated to the covenant is the idea of be fruitful. Be fruitful and multiply. Now, the one of the interesting aspects is being fruitful goes back to Genesis in many verses. But if you think about the tree of knowledge, it's not eating the fruit, right? So from the very beginning, God is controlling or wants us to control our fruitfulness. Have, you can eat from any of the trees, but not from this tree of knowledge of good and evil. And each time we see the covenant in the early part of the Torah and then throughout, we see often associated with the covenant um, the fact that we'll be fruitful and multiply and commanded to do that. But back to the Genesis um, and the garden, um, God is controlling our fruitfulness. And when we rest on the Sabbath, in a sense, what God is controlling is our, is our, our creative ability, our, mul our ability to multiply, our ability to be a creator, our ability to be like God. And, and what we're essentially seeing, and we see this with Babel, we see this with Noah, we see this um, um, uh, with, with the covenant in, in Exodus, we see this in various places, but the Sabbath is in effect a rest from creation. It is a perpetual, in a sense, covenantal idea of controlling our creativity and our what we create so there's something really profound and there's a there's a lot of pattern in the old testament having to do with this around each of these major covenantal events each of these great milestone moments in the old testament i can't speak to the new testament i'm sorry i just don't know it well enough but i suspect there's some pattern there too However, it's clear in the Old Testament that there, is, and frankly with the prophets as well, that God would have us to be fruitful and multiply as an individual with Abraham to become a great nation. Okay, uh, the, the 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 nation of Israel. Okay, and from the very beginning with with Adam, um, the world. But also, God is quite emphatic, in a sense, about controlling our creation, our likeness to God, controlling the way we create. And it seems that when we go too far, Allah, what happened with Noah? Back up, Allah, what happened with Adam? Allah, what happened with Noah? Allah, Allah what happened... Um, with the Tower of Babel. What happened with the bull at in uh, um, when they shattered the tablets? When we go too far in our creation, that's when God steps in and um, I'll say corrects us or punishes us or destroys us. Uh, us or expels us from the garden it destroys the tower destroys the world so um destroys the nation as he did in exodus so there's something about controlling our creativity and there's something about rest because when we rest we ponder what we're creating it's we're in a way we're stepping back from our creation, observing what we create, and giving a thought whether it's proper, let's say, whether God would accept, would condone it. 
And so if we live in these, uh, if we live in times that are um, what some consider to be spiritually interesting times, that's to put it lightly, you might ask yourself, are we going too far with our ability to create? I could go on and list a whole bunch of ways in which I think we are. And in ways that are frankly just just um, so questionable in terms of are we being the creator? Are we creating the babble? Are we corrupting the world? If there's truth to the Bible, and that's a rhetorical question because any faithful folks don't have a hesitation on that answer. But, but if you're a believer, then you might ask yourself, is this a factor in what God does next? You know, after uh, God destroyed the earth in Noah, which is the Parsha, the Torah portion we're in right now, he left the world with three sons to repopulate it, three sons of, of Noah, Japheth, Ham, Shem. And we, we know that they have great lineages, Shem being a, the, 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 the lineage of the Shemites, the Semites. But there was Japheth and there was the Ham and the curse of Ham. And there was a lineage that comes from uh, Noah's sons, that includes um, names that ultimately represent nations. They're the same nations that are spoken of in Revelation, in the in in the uh, in the in the Brit Hadashah, the New Testament. If God declares the end from the beginning, isn't God in a way? Declaring it through names, he's often worked through names. Names are so important in the Bible. They have meaning. They're not just what is the name of that person. The names have deep meaning. And, and their lineage has deep meaning. So it's, it's a word that has a meaning, son of a word that has a meaning. So for me, Jonah is a name that means peace, dove, some say Holy Spirit, son of Amitai, truth. So you, you could say that Jonah is the Holy Spirit, son of truth, in a biblical Hebrew meaning way. Everybody's name has meaning. There are friends of God. There are all sorts of names that have different meaning. But the names that we hear are out of the um, story of the great flood, the story of Noah are the nations, names that will become nations. Cush, Put, Etzrayim, Canaan, Magog. Names that will become nations that are, are the battle, that represent the battle at the end. Names that had great significance along the way. Mitzrayim, Egypt. So, God destroyed the world because it had become corrupt. And when he recreated it, he acknowledged the evilness of humanity from its youth. So he didn't create a perfect world. He created a world in which we opened the ark. It became our world to do what we will with. But with that ability to create comes great responsibility. And God has warned us over the millennium what happens when we go too far with uncontrolled creativity? Okay. That's a thought for this morning. One day before the day of rest. Shabbat Shalom tomorrow night. I always look forward to it. How about you? Do you look forward to rest? Do you look forward to the Sabbath? Do you look forward to a moment where you stop creating so much 
and think about what you're creating and the implications of the life you're building. Zygazone.